Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about why not to buy a Jeep Compass even though they look cool. No one has to admit they're cool looking vehicles. There's no arguing that. They got a nice look to them. Now this particular one is a 2017. So it's three years after Fiat has taken over Chrysler. And as far as I'm concerned, that's three years into the Jeeps being made cheaper and cheaper. Now, even though it's a smaller vehicle, you can see the gross weight stuff, 45, 75 pounds. They are not lightweight vehicles. But if you look under the hood, it's only got a little four cylinder engine. And you couple that with an automatic transmission, you gotta get that engine spinning pretty fast, high RPMs, before it starts getting any decent acceleration. But even though it's a small engine, you can see down here, there's not much working room. You gotta work on these things. They're still pretty hard to work on. They put it in transversely and there's not that much working room. Now this is an all wheel drive vehicle as you can see when we go under. It's got drive going to the rear and drive going to the front wheel. But as you can also see here, it's not that high above the ground. So even though it's a Jeep four wheel drive, it's not really a serious off road vehicle. It's not high up in the ground. It's more of an SUV with four wheel drive. As you can tell, it's got front doors, and back door, so it's pretty much SUV styled. It has a kind of smallish, below average room in the back seat, and it's got a trunk that's a smaller size. The Toyota Matrix my wife has has got a lot more space than this trunk has, and it's got a low slung luggage carrier on the top, but it's so small, there really isn't all that much that you could hook up there. This is a high end one, so it has a video display. Navigation camera, HIAD headlights, and leather seats, a Sirius radio, moonroof, and superficially it looks like a good vehicle, but it's made by Fiat Chrysler, and there's where the problem lies. If you want a long term reliable SUV, this is not the vehicle for you. Customer line that bought them invariably had problems. Some bought them new and had problems from the get-go with electronics, with transmission failure, right from brand new. Others bought them second hand and saved a whole bunch of money. There's no arguing that. I've seen people buy them when they have 25,000 miles on them and they pay well under 50% of the original sticker price. But there's a reason for that. The quality just is not there. Now even though this only has a four cylinder engine, it's still pretty much a gas hog. In town, this car gets about 18 to 19 miles a gallon because it's heavy and that's four wheel drive. But at the same time, it doesn't have that great acceleration. I've seen V6 engines that get better gas mileage than this that have much more horsepower. And let's face it, the modern Jeeps are nothing like the old Willys. These things aren't going to last forever. You might get a Toyota Matrix that's about this size. They might last you three, four hundred thousand miles easy. These things, you're lucky if you ever get anything over a hundred thousand miles out of them. The compasses, they were basically made because they wanted to cash in on a Jeep name and make a small SUV that they can sell but that is such a cramped market with such great vehicles already there. A wise person, they'd think twice before they plop their money down for one of these things. Just understand for that price, you're getting a lot lower quality too. I mean, if you want to get something, you always want to have a Jeep and you're driving four or 5,000 miles a year, hey, it might last a few years. But the Fiat technology that's put into these things, not known for longevity in the least. These things, as I said, they don't have the acceleration. And this is the bigger engine. This is the 2.4. They make a two liter that's even slower. And with all the weight that it's pulling around with the four by four system, it just is not a zippy vehicle to drive around. And at the same time, it gets pretty crappy gas mileage. So you're really not getting the best of either world. It isn't particularly fast and it doesn't get good gas mileage. It kind of makes me wonder what their engineering design was behind this thing. Other than just another one of Fiat Chrysler's idea of, oh, let's make something that looks cute, see if we can rush it out and sell it to people. Now they are selling a reasonable amount. The first ones that they made, they only sold 60,000 of them, but 2018 they sold 160,000 of them. So they're banking on a Jeep name, it's paid them back some dividends, they're selling them, 
But really, the quality isn't there if you're looking for a long-term small SUV that you can drive without having a lot of expensive repairs as they age. And believe me, the transmission repairs on these things, they're expensive and they're also common as the vehicles get older. And when you look under the hood, you can see low quality. Look, here's the top. You can see that's all corroding. We'll go to the back. Look how all these nuts and bolts are all rusted and corroded. And that's on a vehicle that only has 30,000 miles. It could use better made metal. Could have better coatings on it. There's no arguing that. It's a big reason I'd never advise one of my customers to buy one of these if they really value their money over time. Now when you take in consideration all the Italian designs and even actual Italian parts that they're starting to use in these Jeeps, the quality is nothing like they were back in the 50s or 60s or even the 70s. As the saying goes, what's in the name? In this case, the name Jeep often works to sell things to people. Selling over 160,000 of them last year, it seems to be working. Let's say you bought a loaded 2018 four-wheel drive. You're talking about $29,000. And if you are comparing that to an all-wheel drive Toyota RAV4 the same year, that thing's about $38,000. So this thing's almost $10,000 cheaper than a Toyota. And yes, it is a cheaper made vehicle. There's no arguing that, which is one of the reasons that they can sell them. Price matters a lot. But if you're looking for long-term reliability, low cost of upkeeping it, maintaining it, I'd stay far away from this Jeep Compass because you really want to never judge a book by its cover. These things may look great, but underneath those looks, you look under the hood, but if you look under the hood, so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.